Welcome to Off Duty. I'm Wendy Bounds. Well, by the time you watch this, I will be in Boston taping a very special episode of Off Duty at legendary Fenway Park, home to the Boston Red Sox. It turns 100 years old this year. But right now, enough about baseball. It is time to talk about football. New York is in an NFL state of mind, and our own market watch is Sam Mamundi. He takes us inside that process as the NFL takes over Manhattan. Welcome to the NFL Draft where 26 prospects and 4,000 fans will gather in one of New York City's most famous venues for a three-day mega event. I came to see the preparations for the event and to speak to some of the men behind it. How many people are working here? How long does it take to put all of this together? Uh, probably about, at our peak, 120 guys that are working at the same time in order to get us uh, set up and built out for the event. How long are they working during the course of a day? Uh, they the calls uh, last from uh, roughly eight in the morning until about ten or eleven at night, um, and we have the uh, possibility that they could go even longer than that, depending on where we're at. I can tell you that uh, we hold the distinction of a very special honor. Uh, we actually have the most seat poles in the history of Radio City Music Hall in order to fit in everything that we need to between the team tables, uh, the number of press, and, and everything else that happens inside the building. So we listen to what fans want. So for example, this year you're going to see fans right down at the front of the stage, right up where the draft picks are announced, which historically was reserved only for the teams. So we're letting the fans in, we've listened, listened to them. How much has social media changed how you present the draft and plan around it? It's had a huge impact. It, it helps grow the interest because the more people talk about what's going on and who's been picked and who's not been picked, the greater uh, the interest. So this year we're, we're trying hard not to, to let the, the announcements out by Twitter and, uh, and only have them announced by the commissioner. For the draft prospects themselves, it's a hectic week in New York of community events, photo ops, parties, and for some, an early taste of plugging for their sponsors. Yeah, it is crazy. You know, events like this, uh, there'll be parties at night. But, you know, at the end of the day, on Thursday when they call our names, uh, that's, that's the highlight of everything. It's not uh, the parties or being in New York. It's, it's being drafted and, and having your dreams uh, realized is what uh, everybody's looking forward to. For The Wall Street Journal, I'm Sam Mamoudi. China is a nation of 1.3 billion people. And here they are. The nominal horsepower figures for that car are over 900 horsepower. So that ought to be fun. Wow, I am really glad I didn't wear my gold lame dress. Beautiful cars, but if those prices leave a sour taste in your mouth, then let's come back stateside where Gail Monahan is teaching us to make our own vinegar. That's what's in this week's Cooking Confidential. You're not feeling like you have to finish the wine in the bottle, you know, and end up inebriated because you didn't want to waste it. I use vinegar a lot. I use it in salad dressings. I use it in sweet and sour sauces. I use it to just add a little liveliness to all kinds of things. And if you make it yourself, it turns out that whatever wine you drink, even lousy table wine, you're not going to believe how much better this wine, this vinegar tastes when you make it at home. People will say it's the best vinaigrette they've ever eaten and they won't know why. And making vinegar is an incredibly green procedure because you're recycling bottles, you're recycling wine. I mean, it's really great. So first of all, I can show you what these mothers look like. They're very weird. They're some kind of a fungus. If you can see this here, when you leave it alone, there's some mothers, lots of mothers in the bottom, and they do something to this wine in this jar that makes another one form on the top. And if you leave the one on the top undisturbed, it'll just get thicker and thicker and thicker. But if you disturb it, a new one will start. And if you don't happen to have a vinegar mother in the bottom of one of your wine bottles, like I did, it's very easy. If you, or if you Google vinegar mother online, you can order it. So there's a red vinegar mother. So you take that. You put it in, I'm not going to put it in a beautiful jar, I'm just going to put it in a regular wine bottle. And then what you do is you take some wine, you pour it in. It needs air, it needs air to become vinegar, so you cover it so bugs don't get in it. 
And then the next time you have some red wine, you put it in there again. And once it's full, you just put it in the closet and wait. And periodically you taste it. You could wait a couple months to taste it. It's certainly not going to become vinegar for at least two months. It might take a year, so you need space for it. I have like a hundred bottles waiting. But you wait long enough, you have fabulous vinegar. I mean, and your friends will tell you when you make salad dressing, it's the best salad dressing they've ever had. That's it for today's WSJ Off Duty. Now I've got to go catch a train to Boston. Next time I see you guys, we will be in Fenway Park. Even if you're a Yankees fan, you are not gonna want to miss this show. I'll see you then.